that approximately how many stars make a galaxy and what is uh, we haven't we don't know what is great attractor uh, well <clears throat> i mean the universe uh, in the universe the basic um, the building blocks of the universe are galaxies right so um, it's like molecules in a in a in a in a in a, in a solid the basic unit is a galaxy so there are um, matter is distributed in the universe in term in units of galaxies and in each galaxy there are about a um, 10 to the power 11 stars right okay. stars. Uh, that's that's the a typical galaxy like our galaxy the milky way of course the galaxy is very in size so there are dwarf galaxies that may have 10 to the 8 stars or 10 to the 7 stars but they go up to about 10 to the 11 10 to 12 stars something like that so these are the units of galaxies. Our, our galaxy is uh, one of the big galaxies. It probably has somewhere between 10 to the 10 to 10 to the 11 stars, right? So that, these are galaxies. Now, um, you went back to my PhD thesis, which is, you know, ancient history. But um, what, what we were studying at that time was looking at how galaxies move in the universe, right? I mean, the thing is that the universe is expanding. But galaxies are not all expanding with the universe because galaxies pull each other, the okay. gravitational force. And, and so as a result, galaxies have their own motions. There are galaxies that are falling towards each other. There are galaxies that are flowing, as we discovered in the 1980s, uh, in coherent motion. And so um, there was a, a big discovery just before I started up my PhD where a, a bunch of people, including my supervisor, Don Lyndon Bell, um, um, discovered that, um, uh, that, the, that the whole um, surroundings in which our galaxy is embedded, the Milky Way, and surrounding galaxies, they're all um, taking part in a cosmic flow. They're all moving at a very fast speed. Our galaxy was moving you know, through the universe at about 600 kilometers per second towards a direction and so were galaxies around us and things like that, very high speed. And of course, people were wondering what's happening. Why are there these coherent flows? Because at that time, people used to believe in a kind of cosmology where the universe was supposed to be mostly homogeneous okay. um, on large enough, large enough scales. And so very large coherent structures, very large coherent motions were not predicted by this kind of uh, cosmology. And so it was very odd to find that there were large flows of galaxies and gal because galaxies have all these stars in them and they're all moving okay. including our own galaxies so they what what this group had found in the 1980s was that our galaxy was going towards a direction uh, along with various other galaxies around us and they thought somebody is pulling us and they named this object the great attractor so that it attracts thousands and thousands of galaxies going towards it and um, and the the quest then was to find this great attractor, and I was uh, you know given the job of finding the great attractor. So what I did was part of my thesis was essentially digitizing very large um, numbers of photographs of the sky, in fact almost half of the sky, and um, using a computer to automatically find galaxies in them. And then from these distribution of galaxies, trying to figure out whether in the direction in which we are moving, there is any, um, you know, unnatural or unusual concentration of galaxies that might actually um, be pulling us. And it, in the end, the, the bottom line was that there was no great attractor. We did not find one. But in the bargain, I found several very interesting things. And these were really large structures of galaxies. I, in fact, found the largest structure of galaxies that is known in the nearby universe, which I named after Shapley, which is called the Shapley Supercluster. And um, at one point, I thought, well, I found the great attractor, because just in the motion, direction of motion of our, uh, our galaxy, we found that there was this huge structure of galaxies, which consisted of tens of thousands of galaxies. Mm -hmm. um, but it turned out to be too far away. Okay. So, um, you know, I, the bottom line of that chapter of my thesis was, that we found this wonderful attractor in the direction of uh, our motion, but uh, I established that it was too far away for the gravitational pull to be strong enough to cause the motion of our um, our galaxy. And um, but but we in the bargain we discovered some really large structures, and of course you know that con con completely conflicted with the cosmology then. 
Okay. And so slowly we discovered that there are all these very large structures, structures that consisted of tens of thousands of galaxies um, all around us, and we call them superclusters. This whole subject of superclusters essentially took off from there, and now we know that the cosmology we believed in the 1980s is wrong. Okay. And actually, the universe is made up of a kind of dark matter and dark energy where um, um, large structures are possible. But uh, and, and but 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 this was discovered um, in a, a survey of galaxies where we were looking for something else. Okay. Um, it turns out now that the great attractor, you know, probably isn't there, and our motion, the motion of our galaxy, is actually a vector sum of the pulls due to different superclusters in different directions. Right. Okay. So Perfect. actually, there is nothing. There is nothing in the direction where we are moving. It is actually a result of various pools in various directions. But, you know, th th that's how things turn out in the universe. I mean, it's not, you know, made up like that. But it was a very attractive thing for people um, in the 1980s to believe that there is this single big, you know, I don't know, conglomeration of galaxies sitting there that's pulling our galaxy and he wanted to find it out. Okay.